Right, good morning again. Um, I didn't choose this title, I was given it, so it doesn't necessarily mean I'm in agreement, but I will try to explain you uh, perhaps what I think is going on. Uh, right, uh, generally I think there is agreement that there isn't a great deal of arterial graft done worldwide. In fact, if we look at uh, the use of two arterial graft, I think probably we're looking at 5%, maybe 10% at the best. Although there are isolated islands where arterial graft is almost 100%, but if you were to look at it as a whole, I'm afraid we're not doing very well. So if you were to take perhaps into account and the majority of patients may get three grafts, two of these grafts are very likely to end to be vein graft. And uh, considering that in Europe there are almost half a million operations done, if you put two grafts per patient multiplied per half a million, you probably can join London to Cyprus. And this gives you uh, an idea of the extent of what we're dealing with and also the problem. Because this is the problem. There are two million operations roughly done worldwide and we think that looking at the literature in the 80 and 90, then 10 to 20 percent of bypass graft will get blocked in the first year, probably in the first months actually, and 50 percent or more may actually be blocked by five or ten years. But are these results still um, correct, let's say? If you look at the literature, we go from quite big extreme. This is the PREVENT study. Uh, I don't want you to look at why the study was done or what they did, but the bottom line is that almost 2,000 patients were subjected to angiography at 12 to 18 months, and the failure rate was 45%. Now, this is pretty impressive. One may say maybe the people who took part into this study should, be, should not be allowed to do coronary surgery. I hope nobody is in this room. Then you go to a situation like this, which is exactly at the other end of the spectrum. This is a group from South Korea, and uh, again, it's a randomized study, and for the purpose of this presentation, I briefly will explain the study. They use a left mammary artery, and they construct a Y graft attached to the left mammary, either using the right mammary, obviously a free piece of right mammary, or using a segment of saphenous vein. And when they review all these patients with angiography at 12 months, the overall patency rate was 97%, and there was virtually no difference whether the right mammary or the saphenous vein has been used. But of course, this is only early stage. But the reason why I use these slides is to say that the failure rate at 12 months was 2%. Compare with the other one I showed you earlier on, which was 45%. So it's a hell of a big difference. But what happened in the long term to vein graft? This is a study which was published a few years ago from my group in Bristol. The original study was a randomized study of on pump versus off pump, and uh, it was published in The Lancet. And this was a follow up study at eight years. And the technique we used was multiple slice CT which is pretty good to tell you whether a graft is working or not. Perhaps it's not so good in telling you whether there is some disease in the graft. The patency rate was virtually identical in the two groups, but what I would like you to, to, to concentrate is not on off pump, but is this. This is the patency in the saphenous vein at eight years, 89 and 85. So if you average this, you've got a patency rate in excess of 87%. So what I'm trying to get at here is the results in the long term are not as bad as they used to be or we thought they were. Now, is this just because we are cheating in Bristol or because we are exceptionally good people? I think it's neither of the two. And in fact, if you look at some other recent study, and this again, I put it up because of the arterial and venous graph. These are two studies looking at radio versus saphenous vein graph. The patency rate of five years of the saphenous vein was 87 and 86 percent. So virtually similar results to the one published for my group. I'll just open a little parenthesis to say that 
they seem to be some benefit in terms of patency using to the radial artery rather than the saphenous vein, although the evidence is to a certain extent pretty slim and the numbers are not very big. But the main indication to radial artery seem to be more in younger people, and again, you have to look at the anatomy. And if your vessels hasn't got a high degree of stenosis, probably to put a radial artery is not necessarily a good idea. So from all of these, what I want to conclude is something quite simple. The data in the, from the 80 and the 90 on saphenous vein graft, I'm afraid, doesn't stand any longer. Surgical techniques are immensely better. Surgeons are better at doing this operation. We got aspirin, which is administered earlier on, maybe PR two or three hours after the surgery, which certainly has improved early patency rate. We know that lipid lowering uh, drugs have got a serious beneficial effect in keeping this graft patent. And perhaps one may even extrapolate and add in a double therapy with clopidogrel, these results may also improve. Having said all of that, in defense, if you like, of the use of saphenous vein, this is what we're really talking about here. I think how we're going to use instead of one mammary, two mammary artery, and there are all sorts of fancy things you can do. This is a left mammary with three distal anastomoses. I have to confess I did this more than 15 years ago when I was a lot younger, more enthusiast, and perhaps uh, even better at, uh, 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 as a surgeon. But the real question here is what should we do? Now, if you look at most of the observational study, because the majority are observational study, we are eagerly waiting for um, David Taggart Arts study, we should use bilateral mammary almost in everybody, perhaps with the exception of obese patients, diabetic patients, severe chronic lung disease, urgent revascularization, and maybe if you are more than 75, since the saphenous vein at 10 years seem to be pretty good, you should dispense from using a bilateral mammary. So I do accept these criteria, but the fact is this is not happening. So why is not happening? Right, I here put just a few concepts which I will elaborate a little further. Generally, as a surgeon, there is focus on short-term results. We have exposure to training, take longer time to do two mammary than one, and there are complications which may result perhaps in bad press. What do I mean for that? The first thing is this. We all focus in on short-term results, thanks to the fact that the society not only has agreed to publish data by center, but also by individual surgeon. So our first preoccupation, and there is an enormous debate going on in the society at the moment, is as a unit, you want to be here or possibly even down here. And as a surgeon, you don't want to be here or up here. You want to be down here. So am I going to do arterial revascularization? Mm, I don't think so, because I don't want to be the surgeon who end up up here. And we had such things, actually, the, in the past in this country. The young probably won't remember, but the people like me do, will do remember Then they were problem related to uh, arterial revascularization and surgeon individual performance. The next question is whenever you do something which is a little bit more complicated, there is a learning curve. The learning curve can take time and is painful. And this, of course, applies to the consultant surgeon who has to embark in doing something a little more complicated. So if the consultant surgeon is not taking it up, how we are expecting? then this message or this expertise is then passed to the trainees uh, since now we are even more concerned on letting the trainees to do the more complex operation going back because of individual surgeon data publication. So we are in a bit of a, of a <clears throat> vicious circle here. And of course, time. I don't know what's happening in many units around the country. I work in two, in London at, uh, at Imperial and in Bristol. If you don't finish by, uh, by five o'clock, two cases, usually there is a riot. And people are not very keen on the fact that you do one, or not very interested whether you do one or two arterial graft. Now, all of this, you, it may sound 
a little bit like a justification, but to finish it all, and I'm afraid it's all gone back to individual search on data publication, which personally I don't agree, you may get some complication. You may get sternal infection or some other complication, which probably you would get, even if you do all saphenous vein graft anyway. But the fact you've done something different from what everybody else does, it will immediately put you on the spot with your colleague in your unit, and if you are really unlucky, in the press and maybe even in some legal cases. So I'm not trying to justify not to use arterial graft, but all I'm trying to say here is it's not happening. Why is not happening? And I would like to give you an example, which is a little bit of deja vu. The same things we saw and we still see, for example, with mitral valve repair. For many years, people of my generation used to say, oh, it's much better to take the valve out than to repair it. We saw it with op-cup surgery. We've seen it with major aortic surgery. And now, perhaps, the flavor of the moment is minimally invasive mitral surgery or aortic surgery. Why are we not embarking more in those things, even when there is the evidence there? And I think the reason is because some of these techniques are a little bit more than average in terms of uh, skill required. They obviously have a much steeper um, um, learning curve, and they require a little bit of degree of fortitude to not be too worried about all the things I told you before. So here we are into a situation where are we looking for a super surgeon? So all these operations need to be done by somebody who is incredibly clever and incredibly sk skillful, or we are looking for dedicated surgeon. And what I mean for dedicated surgeon? I used to do this 10 years ago. I don't do it anymore. I don't know why, perhaps because I'm lazy. But I think my solution, or the solution I would like to propose is, we need people who are dedicated to certain procedure. And how this is applied, for example, to mitral repair, most units nowadays will have a couple of surgeons who just do that, or in the majority of cases do that. The same can apply to arterial graft. And why is that? The reason is very simple. No matter how many evidence we provide, we will never go from five or less percent arterial graft to 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 percent of arterial graft. It has to be a progressive step-by-step -step process. And the only way I can see this happening is by having dedicated surgeon who will do the cases which perhaps in the first instance are more uh, to benefit from the use of arterial revascularization, and then they will be able to pass this skill to the trainees. I think this is the only way I can see it happening because otherwise, even if David show us, as I'm sure he will, that two arterial grafts are better than one, it will not be taken on because there is too much of a big step. Thank you.